Hey you right team, welcome to a new video and today we're going to be talking about British Army pay for the soldier and the officer. Like I said, today we're gonna to be talking about the British Army pay system then and how much you will roughly get paid being a soldier, so that's starting off from recruit, working through the ranks, and or even cover uh, how much you will get paid roughly as an officer. It's important to know, because I get asked this question quite a lot, that when you're in training, whether that's Winchester, Purbright, Catterick, AFC Harrogate, or Sandhurst, you get paid. So even the Army Foundation College Harrogate, you get paid as a recruit soldier. Which is pretty awesome, because I remember when I was a recruit, I was 16 years old, and the first couple of months I was like taking home seven to 800 pound a month. It's most probably a little bit more now because of inflation, but 16 years old, that's not a bad little paycheck to uh, be taken just out of school. What I'll do then is I'll quickly just cover, uh, as a soldier then, from entry to sergeant, and a little bit more, how much per year you can roughly expect to earn, and then I'll break down my pay roughly so you can sort of see how much you take home, what sort of outgoings are, what sort of money you're left over with after that. And then we do the same for the officer's pay. Obviously I can't go into too much detail because I'm not an officer, but I know roughly how much they earn. So I can tell you per annum how much you're gonna earn. And then obviously you're gonna deduct tax um, and certain out outgoings for that as well. As a recruit in initial training then, so like I said, whether that's Purbright, Winchester, Harrogate or Catterick, because I believe it is the exact same pay in Harrogate, so at 16 you will, get, yeah, you will be getting paid the same because you are still a recruit and you're part of the British Army, is about £15,985, so just shy of £16,000 per year. Remember you've got your tax code bracket, so roughly around £12,000 to £13,000 is it taxed on and then anything over that will be taxed about 20% you pretty much have no outgoings either. Uh, you don't, I don't think you pay accommodation uh, and you don't pay, or you pay, your food comes out of your uh, monthly wage. It's about 100 and something pound a month. But even after that, the rest is just, just disposable income unless you have obviously your own sort of outgoings like phone, uh, if you already own a house before you join or a car, you're gonna have that. But if you're a young uh, lad or girl, you've just joined, you've got no outgoings, you've got £16,000 per year uh, to spend on whatever you want. So that's how much you will, you will earn as a recruit. Once you leave training then, this then does go up. So as a private soldier, uh, obviously depending on what corps you are, you might be a sapper, you might be a gunner, private, ranger, it goes up to about £20,000 per year. And then this is where the pay bands and the supplement come into play. So the way it works, there's four supplements. So depending on what trade you are, will depend on what supplement you are. Supplement one is the lowest, supplement four is the highest. So supplement one will be the lower pay band, two is a little bit higher, three is a little bit higher, and then four is a little bit higher. Uh, I can't remember exactly what they are. Uh, I know PT calls in supplement one, I can't really remember the others. Uh, artillery, household cavalry is supplement two. I think a couple of trades in the artillery might be supplement one. Infantry might be supplement two. I think medics um, and all your technicians are supplement three. And then your Apaches are supplement four. Anyway, so that's how that works. And then each year it goes up a pay band to a max pay band. So say like each rank has about five uh, pay bands. So when you promote, you'll go up, uh, you're on a pay freeze for a couple of years, and then every year um, until you reach the max pay band, you will get a pay rise, including the inflation at April if we do get one, as sometimes we don't because we are the public sector. So every year you will normally get a pay rise, and then by the time you hit max, you should be looking at promotion, already promoted, and then you'll go up a year again. So recruit, around 15, 16,000 pound per year. Private is about 20,000 pound a year, uh, supplement one and then two, three, four, be a little bit higher. As a Lance Corporal then, so this is different for every trade, but I would say after being a in the Army three or four years, you'll be looking at getting Lance Corporal, sometimes it's quicker. 
Uh, certain trades you give it straight out of phase two, but your phase twos are longer. Um, sometimes it's a little bit longer, it might be five or six years. But let's say on average three to four years, you'll promote to Lance Corporal. Your pay will go up to about £27,000 per year. Outgoings, you're going to be paying accommodation charge of about £70 per month. Tax, national insurance, which everyone has to pay, and then that's your outgoings. You might have a few other little 20 to £30 outgoings here for PRIs, subs, uh, mess bills. Um, but other than that, your main outgoings is your accommodation for £70, national insurance, and then your tax. And then the rest is your own. So as a Lance Corporal, I think it's about £1,500 a month take home. Uh, that's after your tax and national insurance and accommodation. Uh, it might be up or down slightly, but that's what I'm trying to remember um, from when I was a Lance Bombardier, depending uh, what level you are. And then remember, you'll promote to Lance Corporal, you'll be a pay freeze for two years, and then every year after that, you'll get an increment. And then remember, something one, two, three, four, the pay will be slightly higher as you depending on your trade. So not bad little pay uh, after three or four years of being in the army. Cool, moving on to a full corporal then, or a lance corporal force as it is within the household cavalry regiment. You're gonna be uh, looking at this, let's just say seven to eight years after being in the army, you promote to corporal. It can be quicker and it could be a little bit longer, but the pay level starting for a full corporal is just over 31,000 pounds, I think it is. I think it's about 31.7. So not bad, once again, your main outgoings is accommodation, 70 to 80 pounds, tax, national insurance. That's your only outgoings when it comes to the army and in any sort of finances, cars you get is yours. But say as a starting corporal, you're gonna have after tax, national insurance and accommodation, about 2,000 pounds disposable income. So I'm a corporal, as a full corporal, I'm just maxed out, uh, I think it was this year. My take home is around 2,000 300 pounds that's after tax national insurance and i've got a few other little things like life insurance uh, and you have some like regimental lottery sometimes it's like seven eight pounds but it's about around two thousand three hundred pounds so i'll break this down for you a little bit more now because this is my rank and then we'll cover the ranks a little bit more after this so two thousand three hundred pound tax national insurance take home so if i was living in the block i'm not i would pay about a 70 to 80 pound accommodation charge which is gonna boost me down, to, uh, lower me down to about 2,200 pounds. Disposable income. So if I wanna go and get a car, say for 300 pounds, come back, or 200 pounds, that still leaves me with 1,900 pounds to 2,000 pounds disposable income. So it's not too bad, but it's not always like that. I'm married, I now own my own house uh, with Amber, so we have a mortgage, we've got bills, so our outgoings are a lot more but you can sort of see how the pay works. And like I said, I'm on supplement two. If you're on supplement one, it'd be slightly lower. If you're on supplement three, uh, like my mate Rob is in the medics, his pay will be slightly higher as a corporal. And then if you're an Apache pilot, uh, and I can't remember what the other ones, I think there's only one or two in supplement four, it's gonna be slightly higher again. Now, say if I was to promote sergeant or a corporal force as it is within the household cavalry regiment, that pay, so you start in corporal, 31 to 32,000 pounds. It goes up each year as you go to an increment. You then max out. It maxes out um, in supplement two, just over 35,000 pounds per year, which isn't too bad. And then sergeant will start around 37,000 pound a year. And then it'll go up the increment levels again. Max out around 40,000 pound, I think, per year. And then you're gonna get star sergeant. It go to around starting around 42 maybe max out after a few years and then you're going to hit wo2 corporal major or sergeant major you're going to be on most probably around 45 i would say 46 000 pound per year and then if you go all the way to wo1 rsm regimental sergeant major or regimental corps major it's going to be around 48 49 thousand pound off the top of my head so as you can see that's roughly the pay scales as it is in the army We've also got to take in consideration then is you do get a pension and the army contribute to your pension. So all the time you're serving over 18 years old, they are contributing to your pension. If you decide to do more than 20 years 
at the age of 40 and beyond, when you leave, you are entitled to a tax-free lump sum payout. I don't know what it is at the minute, but I remember years ago, if you hit Sergeant Major, a W02, you were looking at about 50,000 pounds tax-free lump sum when you left, plus your half pension and then your full pension when you retire uh, later on in life. On top of this then as well, as a soldier within the British Army, you will get 30 days leave and bank holidays included on top of that. And this is paid, so that's 30 days plus bank holidays, paid leave. So you put in your leave pass, you go away for two weeks, say I go away for a week, next month in May, I will still get paid for the whole entire May. And then it still leaves me another 25 days because it's working days to get um, more leave. So say I take two weeks of summer, I then take two weeks off in August, I still get paid for the entirety of August and then the same at Christmas. So you get your paid leave. Uh, it's one of the best uh, paid leave benefits that you can receive out there along with the pension. It's definitely by far one of the best pensions that you can get out there without having to put your own money in. So that's how it works uh, for being a soldier from recruit up to WO1, you're going to be looking at starting off at about 15,000, 16,000 pound a year to about 20, to about 27, to about 31, then to about 36, to about 40, 44, 45, and then finishing off your career close to around 48 to 49,000 pound per year, I believe. So it's not too bad. Uh, you will get more money as you go away. So if you go abroad, you can get things like LSA, LOA, it starts off at about six pounds a day. The more, the higher the levels you go up, it can go up to 10, 14, 15, 16, and then you can max out um, at like 30 pounds a day. But it does take quite a few days to build up to that. Each level goes up roughly every 180 days. Uh, so there are other little benefits when you do go away on exercise, operations, overseas, etc. I'm now going to cover officer's pay. Uh, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but these are on the British Army website. It doesn't break it down completely. Uh, the British soldiers and the British officers pay uh, per annum up to certain ranks you can find on the British Army website. The link is always in the description to my videos. So let's start off, uh, you're at Royal Military Candy Sandhurst, you're starting off your career as an officer, as an officer cadet. You're gonna be looking at around 27,800 pounds per annum while you're serving in the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, and I believe it's a year long, isn't it? They do three terms spread over a year. Works slightly different as an officer than it does a soldier. So soldier, uh, you join, you have to do certain career courses to then promote uh, once time served as well. I believe as an officer up to a certain rank, it's just done on time. Uh, so you're finished uh, Sanders, Officer Cadet, you then become a second lieutenant. I think it's after a year or two, maybe 18 months, you then become a lieutenant. But let's say you leave Sanders as an officer cadet, you become a second lieutenant. You then go from around 27 to 28,000 pounds a year to about 33,000 pounds per year. After a year or two, I believe it might be a year, you then promote to lieutenant. That's going to be about 34 to 35,000 pounds per year. And then this is where the biggest pay rise that you almost really see throughout the British Army is. So after you've done a couple of years as a lieutenant, you've proven yourself, time served, you then become a captain, you get a nice pay rise from 34 to around 42,000 pounds per year. And then from a captain, you then go on to major, which is around 50, 53,000 pounds per year. But I believe getting from captain to major, it's a lot more difficult, a lot more time served, and your responsibility does go up an awful lot. But they're the sort of pay benefits, and then same as being a soldier, you're gonna have tax, national insurance, you can have your accommodation charge if you're living in the accommodation. I believe it is slightly more because you do get a slightly bigger room. Um, you also have officer mess bills. Dinner works slightly different than it does as a soldier. So your bills are slightly higher, but you are getting paid a little bit more. It's, remember, it's important to remember, officer cadet around 27, a lieutenant around 33, second lieutenant about 34, and then when you hit captain, it's gonna be about 42, and then major about 53, and then so on as you climb through the ranks. They still got all the same benefits as you do as a soldier, uh, pension, and your paid leave as well. 
So that's today's video then, that's just talking about military pay. I hope you found it useful, I hope it helps you out in deciding what you want to do with your career, where you want to go. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, it really does help the video, it really helps with the algorithm and it lets me know you're enjoying them. Comment below with what you want to see next and I'll see you soon.